It's the Thursday afternoon edition of Weather for Weather Geeks here on April the 9th. Uh, we're expecting an active afternoon in the weather department, so let's get right to the details, not waste any time here. Uh, one thing for sure, you step outside this afternoon, it is warm, uh, just as promised. These are the 1 o'clock hour temperatures by uh, uh, weather stations across the uh, region. Sometimes I get a question, uh, why don't you show the temperature for my city? Uh, this map shows uh, a lot of cities that have uh, what we call backyard weather stations or the kind of weather station you can buy that has the ability to upload data to the internet. Typically these are not your uh, real cheap stations. Some of these can, can run up to $100 or more, uh, but they have the ability to upload their data to the internet and that allows us to pull the data in automatically uh, every hour. So that's what we have here and we could put more readings on this map but it would make the map just look too cluttered and busy. So that's why we don't have more. There are more weather stations out there than in just these cities but uh, it would just make the map look a little too busy. Anyway, uh, it is warm. Temperatures in the middle and upper 60s. It's even a little bit humid outside. And here's what the radar looked like as I hit record at about 1.44 p.m. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the current radar because when most of you watch this the radar is going to look different. The information will be a little bit outdated. But uh, nonetheless after a round of morning showers we had a few sunny breaks and then heading through the one o'clock hour some rain pushing back into parts of the valley. Off to the west maybe a little hard to see with the radar on but there's some thunder and lightning out here really from about to oh, Columbus on north towards Mansfield, Bucyrus, Marion. Uh, these are non-severe thunderstorms. Uh, they've got a little wind with them but uh, you know, earlier on there might have been some little pea-sized hail uh, in parts of northwest Ohio with this, but right now these are not hail producers, they're not producing much wind, they're just some good old-fashioned downpours with some thunder and lightning. Let me put a loop on this, show you the general direction. Again, not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because uh, we want to talk about what's going to happen later today. Uh, these have been moving generally northeast, from southwest to northeast over the last few hours. It'll take a second for the data to load in here uh, for the loop. But uh, these originated back in western Ohio and have been uh, cruising to the north and east. So we're going to get wet again across the valley uh, during the middle of the afternoon. Uh, some of the real weather weenies, of course, like thunderstorms. And I like a good thunderstorm myself, but we're never going to root for severe weather. Uh, so with that in mind, these mid-afternoon showers and maybe some thunder pushing in will act to stabilize the atmosphere somewhat and reduce our chances for some severe weather this afternoon. Here's the overall outlook uh, as far as the uh, outlook for severe weather this afternoon. All right, so we have in the dark green, which encompasses just about our entire viewing area, that is the marginal risk. Uh, these terms are what the Storm Prediction Center uses. Uh, this is marginal. This is slight in the yellow. And then you get into the enhanced area in the kind of orangish color here. Enhanced is more is a higher level than slight. So the, the bullseye for severe weather is going to be out here this afternoon. That's where all the dynamics are coming together just right, uh, whether it be wind speed, wind shear, moisture transport, etc., etc. That's that's where everything's coming together just right. The farther east you go, the smaller the chances are for severe weather for a couple of reasons, but chiefly we've had a lot of clouds and now we're having another round of showers and we're just not going to get enough instability to really get a lot of real big storms going. Now that said, I'm not going to rule out uh, a couple of feisty storms before the day is through. Now let's uh, focus on the future then. We'll bring up our high resolution rapid refresh model. The atmosphere is marginally unstable and we do have quite a bit of wind aloft that can aid in storm development. Here's the simulated radar on the HER at about 4 p.m. I'm actually going to back this up a couple of hours to show you how it's performing as I hit record. And as you can see, it's not doing great. Uh, here's what it thinks the radar should have looked like at 2 p.m. Again, maybe 15 minutes after I record this. Here's, uh, here's reality. You know, it doesn't really have the, the rain in the right place. So this is one of those situations where we have to take the model idea with a bit of a grain of salt because it's not picking up on the activity that's happening right now all that greatly, so that leads to us not trusting it all that much as we go into the future. But anyway, here's 6 p.m. this evening. Uh, this, I'm sorry, this is 4 p.m. this evening, 4 p.m. with uh, maybe a shower or a thunderstorm around. We've been bulls, uh, we've been focusing in on kind of the 4 to 7 p.m. range for our most active period of the day. Uh, now that's what the the model here is advertising, but again we have to be a little bit careful about taking it verbatim 
because it's not doing a great job right now. But based on other models that I've looked at, you know, our, our job as meteorologists is not to just look at one model and believe it lock, stock, and barrel. We've got to use our experience and knowledge to, you know, use a blend of, of, of ideas. And, you know, even though the, the HRR here, H-R-R-R, is not doing great currently, uh, it should have generally an okay idea for late this afternoon and this evening based on some of the other modeling. So I think our most active period is right around here. This is at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, now, is this line producing severe weather locally? Eh, maybe. It, it's, it's not a slam dunk, certainly. Uh, we have a modest amount of instability. Let me show you the... Uh, let me show you the CAPE. If you've watched these videos or read my blogs before, CAPE is Convective Available Potential Energy. Fancy weather term for how unstable is the atmosphere. And as you can see, the bullseye is out here. And this is a great map to look at to, to figure out where it's most likely to go gangbusters later today. The CAPE is really high out there. Locally, it's, it's kind of marginal. Uh, certainly not great, but enough to produce lightning and thunder, certainly. But Damaging winds, large hail, I'm a little skeptical of that. Another thing we can look at real quickly here is the wind aloft at 5,000 feet later on today. There's a lot of it. Uh, wind speeds here at about 5,000 feet, getting up into the 45 to 60 or 65 mile per hour range by early this evening. And any of these heavier showers or storms can certainly pull down some of that wind. The other thing that wind up at that level can do is further destabilize the atmosphere, uh, can cause... if other conditions are right, it can cause actually some spinning of the atmosphere. So this is one of the things we look at when we're uh, concerned about tornadic activity. Tornadic activity, very, very, very unlikely here locally this afternoon. Uh, in fact, let's bring up the Storm Prediction Center odds. Take off this information. Uh, we can look at the uh, Storm Prediction Center odds of tornadic activity within 25 miles of any one spot. You can see there's a 10% area out here. That's that uh, brownish area, 10%. Damaging wind uh, locally. We're looking at uh, being in the 5 to 15 percent range, and hail, not very likely, 0 to 10 percent maybe, locally. Uh, so if we get a severe thunderstorm, and the odds of that are not high, but if we were to get one, damaging winds would be the primary threat. All right, so that's the story for the rest of the day. We're already over seven minutes, so let's get moving here. <laughs> let's talk about our Friday. Uh, the threat for any big storms will end pretty quickly this evening. Uh, Friday is the last day of the work week. Let's bring up the simulated radar for tomorrow morning. And our cold front's going to be pushing in tomorrow morning. Take off some of this other information. Some showers around, it looks like, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. So off to work, off to school, and it looks a little damp. But as we've been talking about the last few days, we're going to get these out of the way in time for the afternoon. This is noon with showers pushing east. Indian's home opener looks dry. Here's 4 o'clock around first pitch. It does look dry, but it does look uh, blustery and chilly up there in Cleveland, uh, not far from the lakefront. Uh, we'll get in the game just fine, though. And then uh, the weekend's coming, and sunshine returns just in time for the weekend. Uh, as far as the longer range, quickly here, here's the 0 to 10 day temperature anomaly outlook. Anomaly being, being difference from average. We're going to see a lot of above average temperatures over the next 10 days. Saturday, a little chillier behind our front. But we're going to bounce right back up into the 60s Sunday. And then next week, a continuation of this pattern. It looks warmer than average for at least the first half of next week, perhaps even the entire work week. But then we are expecting a pattern change in the longer range. This uh, would be the 10 to 15 day outlook, so a five day period here from the morning of the 19th through the 24th. This is a flip back to what we had in the winter, warm in the west, cool in the east. So next 10 days looking all right, but after that, a chilly period. But nonetheless, Seba has been saying this week, with all the rain we're getting and then a nice weekend, and we're going to sprinkle in some sun here and there next week, things are already starting to green up a little bit. That process will continue, and uh, you know the landscape's going to look a lot different a couple or a few weeks from now. That is the Weather for Weather Geeks video on this Thursday. All right, you know the drill. Stay tuned on social media. Put Meteorologist in front of my name to find me on Facebook. I'm Eric WFMJ on Twitter. We like Twitter a lot more for getting out severe weather information. It's in real time doesn't screw around with what you see. Facebook filters out a lot of what you see. Uh, so if things get nasty this afternoon, that's where you can find me on social media. If things get real nasty, we might do a live stream on WFMJ.com. Uh, we'll see about that. Uh, and certainly at 6, I'll be showing you fresh radars on TV with a fresh update because things could be pretty active as we hit the air on 21 News this evening at 6 o'clock. Thanks for watching today's Weather for Weather Geeks.